Hello, my name is Clay Phillips and I'm the service manager for the Albuquerque office of PLTI. We're producing this video in order to provide basic operating instructions of the EST-3X fire alarm control panel. So let's take a look. This is your fire alarm control cabinet. Inside you find your fire alarm control panel, wiring, and backup batteries. In some installations, the backup batteries will be in a separate fire battery cabinet, either below or in near proximity to the main fire alarm panel. It'll depend upon your installation. You have your wiring here. Wiring should not be messed with by anyone but an authorized, trained professional. This is your main control interface with indicator lights, display screen, control knob, and buttons. Let's move in a little closer to get some details on the controls. Across the top, you have your indicator LEDs. Alarm, disable, supervisory, ground fault, CPU fault, trouble, and power. In the center, you have your LED display, which typically gives you your time and date, your location title, and alarm history. If there's any events on the system, this will display the details of those events. You have your central control knob here, which is a dual function. If you press it, it has a select function. If you rotate it, it scrolls through your menu. Across the bottom, you have your acknowledge button, your alarm silence button, your panel silence button, and your reset. Now let's go into some detail on these. If you have an alarm on your system, your alarm light will be flashing. This is a red LED. If you have manually disabled any devices on your system, then you will have your disable light. If you have a supervisory event, such as a duct detector or a tamper switch on a sprinkler system, then your supervisory light will be on. If there's a ground fault on the system, this light will be on. If you have a CPU failure, this light will be indicate as such. Troubles on the system are here. And then, of course, the green light for power. Your display screen here will give you event details, such as a description of where the alarm is at. If you have an alarm or a supervisory or a trouble, it will actually show you the information. To acknowledge an event, you press the acknowledge button. To silence the panel after the building has been evacuated or declared safe, you hit the silence and that will turn off your notification appliances, which is your horns and your strobes. Panel silence will silence the beeping on the panel itself. And then reset to clear the system troubles and to reset the panel. Let's go through some simulations so you can see how things function. First thing I'm going to do actually is unplug one of the batteries down here. This may take a moment, but this is going to show up as a trouble. Panel will start beeping, trouble light will start flashing, information will display on the screen up here. Okay, you see the trouble light flashing. You have information displayed on the screen indicating that there's a trouble in the queue and the trouble you have selected are local trouble active battery trouble. Once I've established what it is, I can choose to act as appropriate for my facility. In this case, I hit the panel silence and that stops the beeping on the panel. Depending upon your facility, you can then contact maintenance, contact us for a service call, or address the system however you need to. Troubles typically will reset themselves once the issue has been resolved. Be it a missing device, a device that's lost communication, in this case, batteries. So if, when I dis reconnect the battery, after a moment, the system will detect that the battery voltage is correct again and that will actually clear itself. There you go. Panels back to normal, green lights on, your indicator is uh, back to normal, and all your lights are clear here. When the panel actually goes into alarm, this should always be treated as a life safety event. Based on the protocols for your particular facility, the building should be evacuated, fire department contacted, 
building checked for safety and once the building has been declared and established safe then the panel should be silenced and reset. Now I'm going to simulate an alarm by pulling a pull station. When you, that happens your notification appliance will trigger your horns and your strobes. So, once the building was evacuated, we established that everything was safe, and I silenced the alarm. I also silenced the panel. Now that we've established that everything is safe, everybody's evacuated, the building is normal, we can reset the panel. This is done here. See, it took a moment. Panel is restored to normal. This will go away. There you go. And everything's back to normal. Note right now that I actually show several troubles on the fire alarm panel. I show an open fault on data card one. And then as you go through, you'll see that there's actually several devices that are missing. What I've done to simulate this is actually disconnected the circuit. But you may also see this if something has happened to the wiring, some devices are missing. So I want you to kind of see this. This open short fault on data card indicates that the wire is not in a loop, that there is something disconnected somewhere on the system. This is a latching trouble. This will not go away until it is fixed and the panel is actually rebooted. This does require a qualified professional to address. Some of the other that we're finding here, main lobby loop pull station, it's common trouble active. I'm going to show you how to see a little more detail on some of your devices. Especially with the trouble, this may be beneficial in helping to troubleshoot over the phone with a technician. They may be able to resolve the issue or at the very least know which parts they need to bring if they have to replace any parts. So we select it up here on the selected trouble and we're actually going to tap the center button. This brings us our detail menu. We have several options here. If we have an alarm on the system we can view the alarms, supervisories, troubles, monitors, or we can go to the main menu. The thing we're looking for right now is details. Device 126, common fault active. This tells me that device number 126 is not communicating properly. And we know why, because I disconnected it. And that's going to be true of all these. You'll see all these details here. Office area smoke detector, restroom hallway smoke, conference room smoke data room smoke. We try to always put good descriptors to help you know where these devices are located at. We try to use the room numbers that are provided to us on the prints or a common descriptor that you utilize in the building. We also try to make this useful for responding fire departments and authorities. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to reconnect this circuit right back here. And most of these will actually disappear as the system goes out and communicates with each one of these devices. Another common function most people need to know how to do is to initiate a drill. A drill is key because many places of course have to perform regular fire drills but the drill function specifically on the fire alarm panel initiates all the notification devices but does not call out to the fire department if the, the system is monitored. Additionally, it does not shut down any of the air handling units and it does not close fire doors. If you need to initiate a drill that triggers fire doors, 
please contact your service professional so we can instruct you specifically on your system. For normal drill function, from the panel like this, you press the central button and you scroll down here to activate and then scroll down to drill. As soon as I touch that center button, it's going to initiate the notification. Fortunately, it's very easy to see, stop the drill. Once you're ready to go to the all clear and silence the system, you simply hit the alarm silence. So let's go through that step right now. Indicate drill. When I hit the silence, it clears the drill and returns the system to normal. A little detail information on the events that take place on a fire alarm panel. An alarm, of course, should always be considered a life safety event and treated with absolute seriousness. It should never be taken lightly. If you have a fire alarm system that is given to nuisance alarms, please contact your service provider and allow them to investigate and come up with a solution for those issues. Supervisories should be considered potentially life safety issues. These are issues that if left unattended could result in serious issues. As I indicated earlier, tampers, which means your sprinkler system has been disabled and will not function to protect your property, or duct detectors, which indicate that the panel is seeing smoke in your air handlers or somewhere near your air handlers, and that should be addressed immediately. Troubles on the system typically are a maintenance issue, could be wiring, could be devices that need to be replaced, could be something as simple as a battery that needs to be replaced. These should always be addressed though. Never ignore issues on a fire alarm panel. It is a life safety device. It is there to protect you and your property. Thank you.